All right, guys, let's do it. So the band thinks that this song would become a hit. Oh, the band thought that Dance of Eternity was going to be the biggest commercial hit of all. If you believe that, I'll <laughs> tell you some more BS. <laughs> You kind of get the feeling like you're skiing downhill, but you don't know how to stop, and you're like, oh my god! Composure, practice, meditation, it's all highly recommended. Let's do it. Start. Go. Yeah. <laughs> hey everybody, I'm Jordan Rudis from the band Dream Theater, and this is Dance of Eternity. Dance of Eternity is one of the hardest dream theater songs to play. First of all, it's all instrumental, so everything about it kind of focuses on the instruments. And I will say that for everybody it's hard, but maybe especially for the keyboard, because I joined the group in 1999. I was all ready to show them all my stuff, so I pulled out all the stops and created this, and here we are about to make it happen. Let's dive deep inside the keyboard parts of Dance of Eternity and see what's happening. I would have loved to take credit for this intro, but I didn't. I didn't make those sounds, by the way. <laughs> the very beginning of the song where I come in playing, there's this cool kind of um, run that I'm playing. I remember being in the studio and playing it for them. I was probably trying to show off or something like that because I had just joined the band. And so uh, when I got the reaction from them, like, oh my God, that's cool. I was like, okay, good, let's do it. It's kind of a Phrygian mode, but it leaves out some of the notes as well. It has a gap in it, if you will, because it goes from G, A flat, C, to D, and then again, Closes it a little bit on the way down. More, more of like an outline. So it's got this sound. And it just repeats, you know, from one octave and then go to another octave. But the trick, of course, is to have it, you know, flow back and forth smoothly. Not easy. <laughs> So what's interesting is it actually starts, it's in G first. And then later on, we actually go to D. You know, on a keyboard, it's a whole different thing to transpose than it is on a guitar. So the guys very often are like, oh, let's transpose that to another key. And I said, they go, ah! <laughs> the guitar is just like, oh, it's easy. Just move your hand up. So it's kind of funny. But I, I accept the challenge as a progressive rock musician. You want to transpose it? I'm going to figure it out. So yes, it starts in G, it goes to D, and then kind of moves from there. The ragtime thing is really pretty funny because the guys are, you know, really serious. They're playing all these, you know, really cool riffs. And I see the guitar players over there and he's just like really into it. And I'm thinking, what can I do to this that would just be really different? So I thought, oh, I'll just play it as a honky tonk. And I was just messing around. And as soon as I started that, they all cracked up. They literally laughed. So the next thing you know, I took this crazy, progressive, like metal-y riff and I put it in a, in a ragtime spirit. And it just makes you smile, which is great. It's a great kind of relief from all the very, very serious progressive metal. So one of the interesting parts with the honky-tonk are the octaves, really, really hard. Because I'm basically going... Takes a lot of work. Makes me think back of the Juilliard days. Okay, let's see, am I gonna use my wrist? Or am I gonna, what's gonna happen? I'll lead with my higher finger and 
when I'm really warmed up and we're playing it on tour, it's, it gets pretty consistent. Yeah, I don't know why we wrote that. That's the crazy part. You really want to practice not only just the finger motions of it, but also you need to practice the head space that you want to play it in. Because, you know, you're standing in front of 30,000 people and you're doing this madness. You kind of want to remember to breathe and relax. You don't go, oh my God, and then it starts sounding like this. The object is to stay calm when you're playing the hard stuff. That will serve you well. How do you stay calm? <laughs> you really want to know my secrets? <laughs> um, what I will do is first I figure out what kind of fingering that I want to put on a section. And then after I do that and I have my fingers all lined up, then I go, okay, how do I want to breathe during this section? How do I want to stand? And what do I really want to feel? So all that is really, really important. Um, so what I would do in this is I might like even try like just breathing smoothly as I'm doing it. So to just know that when I'm on stage and at a festival and playing this crazy song, that I'll be able to breathe like that, to think like that, and you know my body won't tense up, I won't freak out, and everything should be good. This is this very interesting part that actually starts with um, a unison uh, guitar and keyboard riff, which is. So that happened, and then when we were writing, I was like, well, that's really, really cool. What happens if the guitar and bass keep on doing that? But I switched to doing something else in the right hand. So that's when all these thirds uh, and stuff come in. And it's interesting because, you know, thirds on a keyboard, it's not the easiest thing to do. It takes some getting used to and some practice. All right, so this section that I'm playing now. We kind of called this the weird section because again, in those days, Dream Theater as a group they were just getting used to having me in the group. And now here he is, an official new member of Dream Theater, Mr. Jordan Rudis. And I brought with me all kinds of different influences that they never knew about. And what I wanted to do is create something that harmonically was very different than anything that they had done. So I remember some of the looks from some of the band members, like what is that? Especially this part. <laughs> kind of has an augmented sound. Again, more thirds. Very weird harmonies. I've been in the band for 25 years now and I think they're still coming to grips with my creative thinking. <laughs> it's true. part is really crazy and it happens to be a unison section and it goes into different time signatures. Um, time signature wise it sounds a little harder than maybe it is. It goes from 3-4 to 4-4 four, four, or 3-4-4-4 four, four, four. but then there's a lovely measure of 12-16 followed by a measure of 10-16 which definitely changes it up. It also goes into this. <laughs> Of course, I've got to be really fast on my program change pedal as well. So after all the madness with these octave switches, and I go into. And 
And of course, there we have a measure of seven because we kind of added a couple notes to just uh, confuse the listener and make it progressive. <laughs> Um, yeah, and that basically leads us to the ending, um, which connects to uh, an another song in the lovely key of C sharp minor. I'm gonna dive into playing Dance of Eternity, but before I do, you can check out the music inside Piano Note. The link is below.
I'm Jordan Rudis, and that was Dance of Eternity.